So uh, our second talk for the day is by uh, Emmanuel Broyard, who will speak about character varieties of random groups. Please. All right. Um, thanks a lot. Um, so th thanks a lot for the invitation. And, and I'm very honored to, to be able to, um, and very happy to be able to speak here at uh, UDI's birthday conference. So I'm going to tell you about joint work with Oren Becker and Peter Varjou on um, character varieties of random groups. So let me define what I'm going to talk about. So we consider a present presentation of a finitely, finitely presented group. So there are K generators and uh, our relations. And we're going to be interested in uh, the, the set of homomorphisms from this, um, this presentation to a Lie group or algebraic group. Um, and for the moment, I mean, actually for the whole talk, we'll only be considering um, complex algebraic groups. So the, the set of homomorphisms I denoted by home gamma G, so you can see it as a closed algebraic subset in G to the K, right? It's just the algebraic set cut out by the equations uh, given by the, the relators of the, the relation. So W1, WR. And I'm going to call this X W, uh, W bar to denote the, the, the tuple uh, of, of words. Uh, the WIs are relators, so they are words in the free group of K generators. Um, and this is usually called the representation variety of gamma in G. So associated to this, uh, of course, if you have a representation, then you can conjugate it by an element of G. Uh, so this amounts to looking at the conjugation action by the diagonal conjugation action uh, on G to the K. And um, and so, so G acts on, on, on XW, and it's therefore um, interesting to ask what happens to, 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 to look at the, the set, the space of orbits. So this is usually called the character variety, and it's defined to be the affine variety whose coordinate ring is the, the ring of um, invariant function on XW. So this is the, the general uh, terminology. But I'm mostly going to be interested in some part of the character variety, the part where the, 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 the group, uh, so the image of the representation, is Zariski dense in G. Okay, because if I'm not Zariski dense, then it basically means that I don't live in G, I live, I live in some other proper subgroup. So, so to, to introduce, to, to, to set up this notation, um, I'm just going to first recall a general fact um, about algebraic, semi-simple algebraic group, um, which is that if you look at the set of tuples that generate a Zariski dense subgroup, uh, then this is a Zariski open set. So, so K here is at least two, and every semi-simple algebraic group is generated um, by two elements. So there is a um, two elements are um, needed, necessary, and sufficient to, to generate a Zariski dense subgroup in G. Um, but it's but it's a fact that the, the set the, this condition generating a Zariski dense subgroup is an open condition, and it's a Zariski open condition. The the reason is because if you don't generate a Zariski dense subgroup, then you you must belong to a proper uh, algebraic subgroup and. And the, this means that you must fix uh, by Chevalier's theorem, you must fix a line in a certain um, projective representation. And, and one can show that there are only fairly many such projective uh, representations to be, to be considered. So, so, so actually, um, uh, yeah, a, a, and each one will give you a, a, a closed condition, the condition that K elements in G fix uh, a, a given line um, fix a common line in uh, in a given representation. That that's an algebraically closed. So that's a Zariski closed condition. So the complement is Zariski open. So we are going to be interested in this in this Zariski open set. So so it's Zariski open, therefore it's dense because G is connected. And 
and I'm going to denote it by X W with uh, as, um, upper script uh, Z to to mean to to mean that I'm just looking at the intersection with this Zariski open set. And and this curly curly X is going to be the quotient in the character variety, so the space of orbits. So yeah, so what's what's nice about this open set also is that the the G orbits in XW are closed. Uh, so that that's a well-known fact as well, as RSK closed. Um, um, in fact, as soon as the X1, XK generate a, a reductive subgroup, then the orbit is closed. Um, so in particular, if it generates uh, Zariski and subgroup, the orbit is closed. And so XWZ is, is, a, is a disjoint union of closed G orbits. And each G orbit is isomorphic to uh, G modulo the center, uh, because the stabilizer of um, the isotropic group of, uh, of uh, any K-tuple in this um, Zariski open set is just the center. Okay, so, so that's the, the, what I'm going to be interested in. Um, of course, it's a very classical object, and I'm going to be able very, to, I'm going to, to be asking very simple questions about it. So first of all, what's the dimension? Of the character variety, um, it could very well be empty. There could be no um, homomorphisms with Zariski dense image. Um, if it's not empty, how many irreducible components do I have? Um, another interesting um, thing to look at is to notice that XW is, is defined of a cube because it's defined by equations um, by these words. And, and G, so I didn't put a, a Q structure on G, but, but it, uh, I could put any Q structure, it doesn't really matter. And, and, uh, and then you get um, that XW is defined over Q, so you have a Galois action that, that permutes the components. Uh, another interesting question is to ask for the singularities of the, the character variety. And finally, I mean, there are many questions, but um, for example, people have been interested in uh, trying to figure out what's the locus of discrete representations, those have, that have a discrete um, image in, in G. Um, uh, people have looked at that in particular in the context of uh, representations of surface groups. And what are the faithful representations? So we have representations from this finitely, finitely presented group. So the image is finitely generated, but it may, but it not, may not be finitely presented. It's not clear that it's faithful in general. So I'm not going to be able to answer these questions in general. And um, I'm just going to, to try to answer some of them, uh, not for all presentations, but um, generically, so we're trying to count, we're going to, 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 be, able, to be able to say that um, these questions have fixed answers if I take um, the presentation uh, at random. So for most presentations, these, these questions have uh, uh, given the same answer. And, and that's what my talk is going to be about. So some piece of terminology. I'm going to say that uh, the presentation or the finitely presented group uh, gamma w is is g rigid if the character variety is finite. Okay, so this means if the character variety is finite, it means that you cannot deform you cannot deform the representation. So you have a representation of, of gamma, and and if any deformation is in fact conjugate to uh, the original, any small deformation is conjugate to the original point. So this is uh, what's called rigid. So, for example, if um, if your your presentation, the finitely presented group you start with is a lattice in a higher rank semi-simple Lie group, such as SLDR, for example, when D is at least three, then it's well known that gamma is is G rigid for all semi-simple Lie groups, and this is essentially uh, what the Margulis superrigidity theorem tells you. Okay. Uh, so if you know that it's finite, then you can look at the Galois action on it, and the you know the Galois Galois group will permute the different points 
Um, so it makes sense to be asking whether uh, there is a single gamma orbit or not. So we say that that the that gamma is is Galois rigid for for the semi simple group G. If it is finite and on top of it, it is Q irreducible, namely that the Galois group acts transitively. Um, so this, yeah. So there is an example of, uh, of this is PSL two Z bracket omega. That's a Bianchi group, and it's not too difficult to to show that in this is Galois rigid. In fact, the only representations in PGL two are the, the original one and the complex conjugate. So that's an example. Um, okay. So another example, very interesting example is what happens if you look at a, a much studied example is what happens if you take a surface group uh, or more general uh, Fuchsian groups. So if you take a surface group, so that's um, given by this uh, classical uh, presentation with two G generators. G is the genus of the surface, and, and there's just one relator, which is the product of the uh, commutators. So, so then it's it's known um, since work of uh, Rapinchuk, um, Binyash Krivitz, and Chernusov, and, and more recent work of Liebeck and Chalef, that the, the dimension of the character variety is um, what it should be. Uh, so you know, you have two G generators and you have one relation. So it should, should be two G minus two times the dimension of G. So you have one relation, so that accounts for minus one. And I divide by the conjugation, the diagonal conjugation action, so that accounts for the second uh, minus, so the minus two there. Um, and on top of this, they show that the uh, character variety is has only one component. So it's uh, ge geometrically reducible. So to tackle these questions, usually there are essentially two methods. So to prove rigidity, I mean, one of the methods uh, originally due to Vey uh, in his paper on local rigidity is to try to compute the H1. Uh, so the cohomology of gamma with uh, values in the Lie algebra, because this corresponds to the tangent space of the character variety. So if you can compute the, the dimension of the tangent space, so if you can show that the H1 vanishes, so the, the tangent space will be, um, will be trivial, and, and then you will have shown uh, rigidity. So that's one way. Uh, that's not the way we are going to tackle this, this problem. Um, the other way is to reduce modular prime and use the Langweyer estimates to compute the number of homomorphisms to, to G uh, on a, uh, to, the, to the Q points or the P points of, of, of G. So it turns out that uh, if you, so that reduces the problem to a counting problem. If you, if you, try, if you understand uh, this number of homomorphisms, uh, this essentially uh, gives you the number of points of your variety, of the character variety uh, in a finite field. And, and then if you're able to estimate this by some, in, in, by some mean, that then, then you can use Langveil to deduce um, an estimate or a precise value for the dimension. And it turns out that in, in the case of the surface group, um, there is a formula due to Frobenius that allows you to compute exactly this number uh, of solutions uh, using character theory. So this is what Liebeck and Schaeff has have, have been doing in particular. Okay, so so before I, I state the main results and uh, and go further, I'm going to give you some some very concrete examples just to show you how um, interesting this um, these investigations are already in the case of SL two. And already in the case when you only have two generators and one relator. Okay. So, in this very particular case, um, things go back at least to the 19th century and the work of Fricke and Klein, uh, where they realized that the, um, the, the, the set of pairs of two 
two by two. So the set of pairs of two by two matrices uh, with determinant one uh, can be parameterized up to conjugation uh, by just the trace of each uh, uh, matrix and the trace of, this, of the product. So if you look at the trace of A, trace of B, and trace of the product AB, uh, then it turns out, and this is a simple computation, a simple fact, I'll explain why that holds, that if you take any word in, in, these, in the W in A and B and you compute the trace, so uh, I mean two by two matrices here, all right? Uh, then what I get is if I can express this trace as a polynomial in the trace of A, trace of B, and trace of AB, and nothing else. The reason is very simple. If you have, um, it for, just follows from hamilton cayley theorem, you know, you just write A squared minus trace of A times A plus one equals zero, which means you can express A squared as a linear combination of the identity and A, with, co with a, a coefficient, which is trace of A. So if you look at your word W and, and you do this to your word, you, you will expand. Every time you see a square, an A square, you replace by A minus one with a trace of A minus one. Um, you, you expand this and at the end, what you get is just a linear combination of A, B and AB and the identity with some coefficients which are going to be polynomials in uh, X, Y, and Z here. So that, that, that's why you get this. And so the polynomials PWs are, have, they are very interesting polynomials. They have integer coefficients um, and, um, uh, and they're so, sort of, they're a little bit mysterious. It's, it's not so clear what this family of polynomials is. For example, it's not clear um, when, do, when do two words give the same polynomial? Um, of course, if two words are conjugated in the free group, then they get the same, you get the same polynomial. But um, is the converse true? Actually, the converse is not true. And understanding um, the difference between these two things is, is actually uh, quite mysterious. So here's an example. If you take W naught, just the commutator, then you get uh, PW naught is X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared um, minus uh, X, Y, Z minus two. And I'm just going to quote a number of very basic facts about this. So first of all, to say that the square, the, the trace of the commutator is equal to two um, is equivalent to say that A and B have a common eigenvector. Okay, so they, they lie in the same Borel subgroup. Uh, another basic fact is that, in fact, if, I, if, I, if you give me three different, uh, three, three, three arbitrary um, complex numbers, then you can always find a pair A, B in SL2C with exactly that, uh, th these, these Fricker Klein coordinates. So trace of A equals X, trace of B equals Y, trace of A, B equals Z. And moreover, um, this pair is determined uniquely up to conjugation, provided um, the trace of the commutator is not equal to two. So away from this, I will call it the degenerate variety, this, this variety where um, uh, trace of A, trace of the, the, where the, the A and B lie in the, com in the same Borel. Away from this, then this pair is uniquely determined. So, um, so that's, it's, it's basically just an exercise on two by two matrices to, to check this. And the third remark is that uh, we can completely describe the, the locus of pairs which do not generate a Zariski dense subgroup. Uh, again, in terms of, of these polynomials, so I recall I call this V-deg here, the degenerate variety is the pair that is not Zariski dense. And that can, can only happen if uh, either you have a common eigenvector, so that means that this polynomial is equal to two, or if X and Y, if, if two of the coordinates are zero, so this gives you three lines, and these correspond to dihedral groups, infinite dihedral groups. And if, if, if you're not in, in none of these cases, then the only possibility is that you uh, belong to a finite possible list of other um, triples that correspond to um, A and Bs generating 
uh, symmetries of uh, some platonic solid uh, cubic symmetries or um, tet tetrahedral or uh, icosahedral. So here, th this capital F here is, is, is a finite uh, set of uh, triples whose coordinates can take only these, these, these values plus minus one, plus minus square root of two. And then the golden, the golden ratio appears here when you have, which corresponds to the angles of the icosahedral symmetries. So, so that's all, that's a that's complete uh, description of the degenerate variety. Okay, so let's, let's take a number, let's take some examples and, and see if we can determine the character variety. So for example, if W is this word here, B A to the M, a to the n, b inverse a to the minus m, and uh, n and m are uh, co-prime, then this is called the bohm slack solitor group. And it's very easy to, to check in this case that the character variety is empty. Um, sorry, the, I meant the Zarsky dense part. So every image has to be degenerate. So, so actually here it should be, uh, yeah, I don't know if I can, uh, change this yeah so um so we'll denote dw by the dimension uh, i will denote the dimension of the character variety by dw and i note that dw can be empty so dimension is minus infinity or it can be zero or one or two but it cannot be everything uh, because uh, sl2c always contain free subgroups right so if, if W is non-trivial, non then the character variety, again, cannot be of dimension three. Um, another example is if W is a power word. So if it's a word to some, some power bigger than two, um, bigger or equal to two, then, then the dimension is always two. So it's always a hypersurface. The reason is uh, it's enough that V is, an, a, is a of order, um, um, is, is of finite order uh, dividing k for w to be by the identity. So, so if you set pw, pv equals this, it was two cos two pi over k, um, that's clearly a hypersurface. And that certainly determines uh, every point on this hypersurface, every triple will um, uh, represent a pair ab that vanishes on w. Um, all right, so I gave a number of uh, further examples. Um, here you have some examples coming from, from uh, topology. Um, if you look at the uh, three sphere um, minus the white head link or the three sphere minus the figure eight knot, uh, then these um, fundament the fundamental group of these spaces have well-known presentations with two generators and one relation, which are given here. And you can compute completely explicitly um, the, the character variety. So how do you compute this explicitly? Well, you do, as I said before, you look at PW and you compute PW. Uh, so PW gives you just one equation, but if you, so it would give you the trace of W equals two, but if you want to say that W is equal to one, you need that the trace of W equals two, trace of W times A equals X, and trace of W times B equals Y. So it's easy to see that these three equations completely um, determine, uh, imply, I mean, if you have these three equations, then W equals, equals one and vice versa, if you are in the Zariski dense locus. So, so you, can, you can give a computer and actually I, I, I did some SAGE um, a routine, a uh, little SAGE routine that compute these PWs. Uh, so if you, you give the computer a word, I mean, he will compute the PW and, and then you can use computer algebra to, to work out each example and compute the dimension and, and, and so on. So, um, yeah, so that, that basically finishes the examples. Another remark is that there is this cell property FA um, the group is, is, has sales property FA if every action on the tree has a fixed point. And it's a remark that uh, if that's the case, then certainly the, the um, uh, character variety will be finite in this case. Okay. 
Uh, and that's the case, for example. So, so it's, a, it's a property that's implied by property T, but uh, is a bit weaker and is satisfied by arithmetic subgroups of uh, SL2 over um, uh, the algebraic uh, integers of a normal field, uh, which is not a quadratic field. So, so let me let me now state one main theorem. So for this for this one, I will stick to SL2. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to look at uh, random presentations. So we go to count presentations. I'm going to fix the number of, of generators. I'm going to fix the number of relators. And I'm going to pick a random word, uh, let's say of length L. Okay. So there are several ways to do this. You can either pick a word a reduced word of length L, or you could pick a non-reduced word of length L. Um, for the proofs, we will use the model where you have um, a non-reduced word, but, but it's easy to see that you can deduce one from the other. So the theorems will hold in both for both models. Um, all right, so, so you basically take, a, um, so taking a random word means you have a random walk on the free group of length L, and you look at the presentation uh, you get here. I just look at uh, the case when you have two uh, generators and one relator. So in this case, what happens is that very with very high probability, um, the group is um, is Galois rigid, namely the Zariski dense part of the representation variety or the character variety is finite, uh, and the Galois group acts transitively on it. And we think we can actually say what the Galois group is. Uh, so, uh, of course, it has to preserve the center. So, so the action on, on, on the points is not is not primitive. Uh, there is this uh, plus minus one uh, relation that is preserved. But modulo the center, we can show that it, the action is very large. It's either the full symmetric group or the full alternating group. We're not sure how to distinguish between one and the other. And we can also show a Galois lower bound of the number of points of the character variety after showing it's that it's finite we can show that in fact it has many points um, it has at least l over log l points and this takes place with very high probability and the probability of exceptions is uh, ex is, is exponentially small right so it's, it's very small probability of exceptions uh, so of course this is a theorem which is conditional on grh Okay, so it's um, so. What do I mean by GRH here? I mean that um, we what we need is that the the Dedekind zeta functions of all number fields, or at least all number fields that arise from our problem. But basically, there is no restriction. So basically, all number fields have no. I mean, have the zeros. There are zeros on the critical line. We need a little less than that. All we need is something some zero free region around uh, the pole uh, at z equals one. So we need a zero free region to be more precise uh, of this size, like one over the log of the discriminant to some small power. And the only thing that's known uh, by um, analytic number theorists uh, these days, it seems, is, is that this uh, is a zero free region with an epsilon here equals to one. And we would need something um, smaller than one. Okay, so um, here's another remark. Um, here's another remark. The representations in this case, in the SL2 case, are usually not faithful. So that's a question that is interesting. I mean, uh, when do you typically have a faithful representation? And if you don't have a faithful representation, then what is the image? So. Look, not, notice that this, the images here are all isomorphic because they are all uh, permuted by the Galois group. So they are all uh, isomorphic subgroups of SL2C. So they're very interesting points uh, of the character. I mean, very interesting subgroups of uh, SL2C. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know when they are typically discrete. I would assume that usually they are not discrete. Um, I also don't know how many, so uh, yeah, another question is how many are in SL2R, how many are, are, are real, how many are in SU2, how many are compact. 
So we don't answer these questions. They're very interesting ones, I think. And I think my, my expectation will be that there will be, um, uh, typically there will be many, many of them will be in SL2R or will be in SU2, but, but I don't know how many. Um, and, uh, and more importantly, I don't, I don't know if the image is finally presented, for example. But what I can say in this very particular case of two generators on, on SL2 is that it's typically not faithful. And the reason is that uh, um, if I have a word, I can look at its reciprocal. So that's the same word, but you read it um, in, from, from, uh, left, from right to left instead of right left to right. Okay, so you took the reciprocal word, which has this expression here, W of A inverse, B inverse, inverse. And it's easy to see that uh, a word and its reciprocal have the same um, Fricke Klein polynomial. Okay. And, and, and so, so if, 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 if one vanishes in SL2, then the also the other one. Uh, on the other hand, um, there is a theorem called the Magnus Freiheitsatz, which tells you when two one related groups are isomorphic, uh, will be isomorphic when the relators are conjugate in the, in the, in the free group. And, and, and but, but typic, typically uh, W is not, for a typical word, uh, is, is never conjugate to its free, it's, uh, it's reciprocal, unless it's a palindromic word, which happens very rare. So typically the representations are not faithful. But this is essentially the only argument I, uh, we have for this, so it would be very interesting to, to find other good reasons why it's not faithful and um, yeah. So um, what do we know, another remark, so what do we know about, about the random groups themselves uh, before we take the image into SL2? Uh, we know that they typically have small, small, um, simplif um, small simplification. Uh, one over six, or so, so, so this means in particular they are hyperbolic groups. Um, another quick remark is that they, they, they do not have this property FA because they typically, with high probability, map onto Z. Um, but what else do we know? We know that in fact they, they are linear over Z uh, by work of Egel and Weiss. The, the, linear, the, the dimension of the linearity uh, of, of the representation here is probably very, very large. And we also know that they virtually map onto the free group. That follows from this deep work, the deep work of uh, Wise and Egel Wise and so on. Um, so, so now let's move on to more than, more than one relator um, so, and more than one generator. So in, in, there is a recent paper, which actually was uh, one of the motivations for our, our work, the paper of Kozma and Lubatsky, which uh, was interesting in, in, interested in, in this question when the number of relators is quite large. So they show that if the number of relators grows with the, the length with L, so at least log L, then with high probability, such a random group has no um, representation, no image in GLDC, D is fixed here, uh, with, without, uh, with, with no large image. So the, every image is virtually solvable, okay? With large probability. Okay, so what we are, so the next theorem is a strengthening of uh, this result of Kozma and Lubowski where we show that in fact, you don't need that many relators, but you need, it's enough to take just uh, boundary many, uh, just enough, but boundary many. So in other words, we have this. So you take a random word, this times with an arbitrary presentation with K generators and R relators. Again, the R relators here are, ta are taken at random independently, at random in a ball of radius L or random walks of length L, uh, that's more or less uh, uh, similar models. And, and we show that with high probability, and high here is, is, is very strong because the uh, probability of exception is exponentially small, then the following happens. So if you have 
at least as many related as generators, then, uh, then in fact, the character variety is empty. So there are just no representations that are Zariski dense. So this means that every representation is, has, um, is not Zariski dense, so in fact, lives in, in the proper algebra itself. Um, if R equals K minus one, then um, the, the character variety is finite and it's not empty and it's quite large. Uh, and it's a single Galois orbit. Okay, so it's Q irreducible. On the other hand, if the number of relators is, is less than K minus two, is K minus two or less, uh, then, um, well, the character variety is, is non empty. And in fact, it's infinite. Uh, its dimension is given, is the expected dimension. Uh, so that's the same formula as the, what we, we expect just by. Uh, um, dimension consideration, just looking at number of generators, number of relators. And we also know that the, the um, character variety is absolutely, absolutely reducible here. There's no, uh, only one, one component. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the theorem actually holds for all semi-simple Lie groups, fixed, fixed G, not just SL2. Sorry, um, I'm in the dark now. Yeah, sorry, I'm back. Uh, that's the smart buildings, you know, these days. So anyway, um, yeah, so the, the, the proof works uh, for, for arbitrary semi-simple uh, Lie groups, but we, we, we need an extra ingredient. If I have some time, I will explain at the end. Um, I should say also that the probability of exception is very small, so it's exponentially small. So this means in particular that this says something uh, meaningful if the WIs are in, um, in for example, are in the commutator subgroup. You know, if I just take them in the commutator subgroup instead of just at random uh, everywhere, then it's, then it's still meaningful. It, it tells me that most, most words, even if I restrict them to the commutator subgroup, have, have this property because, um, uh, yeah, because the, the number of points in the commutator subgroup in a ball of radius L is, is um, uh, is very is small, but not exponentially small. Um, and the corollary is basically that the Lubotsky, the Kozma-Lubotsky theorem holds uh, as soon as you have more than k general, more than k related. So every image will have a virtually solvable image. The reason is, if if not, then there will be some semi-simple quotient, and that's ruled out by the theorem. Uh, another corollary is that a random group with more than with k or more uh, relators, uh, whenever it acts by isometries on the hyperbolic space or on any given symmetric space of fixed dimension, must have a fixed point either on the space or on the boundary. Okay. So here's a related question which uh, we do not answer: is um, is it true that gamma w has property f a with high probability? as soon as you have at least as many relators as generators. And so this would be, if it's true, it would be an improvement on work of Damani, Gerard, and Pritiki that shows exactly that in the case when the number of relators is, is uh, at least exponential in the, in the length. And I also remark that these groups do not have property T in general when R is, is bounded, however. Okay, uh, my time is is running up, so running out. So I probably will skip this slide. I'll explain briefly uh, the the uh, move to the proof, the idea of the proof. <coughs> so the idea of the proof is is again to reduce mod p and to, to use the Lang estimates to relate the dimension of the variety uh, with the number of points. So so here we have we don't have only one variety. We have a family of varieties that depend on this word. And this word is long. So it's a long word. So the variety would have large degree, okay? So the degree will typically be equal to the, the length of the word or, or some fixed power of the length of the word. 
Okay, so so what we need is to we we need a long way estimate that is um, completely effective because we need to control the, the the error term, and it turns out that the error term in the long way estimate is not so clear in the in the paper of Lang and Veil vale, um, original paper. Uh, it's not so clear or either if you um, use. Um, um, for example, the, the Ling's theorem. What's what? How does the error term depends on the degree of the variety? Okay, so so it turns out that in fact, uh, people in, in some computer scientists and people working in co theory have used um, other arguments, uh, sometimes based on Goldner basis, that give a, a very good estimate on, on, on this error term that depends only on the degree and they show it's polynomial in the degree. Okay, so here we fix the number of variables, so that's not an issue, but the degree can go to infinity and it's, it, it's crucial for us that it does not go exponentially, for example, and that we have a, a polynomial control. Okay, so, so this uh, will help us determine the dimension of the, uh, of, uh, the variety. The, the constant in front of the Q to the X here is the number of geometric components over FQ. And so, so the strategy will be to, to estimate the number of P points, uh, the FP points of the character variety or the word variety. Um, and we, we will, the main point will, will, will be that um, we use a double counting argument where we are going to, on the one hand, average over primes, and on the other hand, average over words. So I'll try to explain this. So why do we average over primes? It's because if you fix a variety and then you, this uh, Langevay estimate uh, and the Chebotanev density theorem or, uh, gives you the dimension of the variety. So the dimension of the, the variety is the limb soup of the, the log of the number of points in XP divided by P. Uh, similarly, if you average the number of points divided by p to the dimension uh, over a window uh, of primes, then you get uh, you get uh, the number of irreducible components. So, if you want to show that the the Galois action acts acts transitively, it's enough to uh, esti to estimate the number of points. Okay, so I, I move on a little bit uh, more here. Uh, I should just stress that. In order to get uh, this control, and because we have lots of varieties, uh, we need uh, an effective Chebotarev theorem, and this is where GRH comes in. Okay, we need effective when we need an effective uh, Chebotarev theorem with fields whose whose uh, degree tends to infinity. So this is typically a regime that is not very well studied in the analytic number theory literature. Anyway. So um, uh, move on uh, on this, I will finish soon, but um, I'll just say we have, uh, one of the things we need to prove is, is, a, is a good reduction lemma. Um, uh, which has, has this form where you basically want to go, you want to say you have an algebraic variety with, with a model of a Z, and you want to be able to, to, to relate the um, uh, geometric components over Q bar of your variety, and the geometric components over FP bar for the reduction modular prime. And that you can do for most primes, but you need very good control for which primes you can do and for which you can't. So, so we, we, we show that there is a, a kind of discriminant delta, which is bounded in a polynomial way in the degree, uh, such that if P does not divide this discriminant, then this reduction mod, mod P on components is, 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 um, is, is well defined and, and the dimension preserved. And, and the proof of this relies, we, we would like to find a con conceptual proof of this, and, uh, but unfortunately all the proofs all the conceptual proofs, you know, take the limit when p tends to infinity, and really, really need, absolutely need this this crucial um, upper bound, polynomial upper bound here. So, so the we to prove this, we have to go through Grobner basis and do effective algebraic geometry in a fairly 
hands-on way. Anyway, so uh, in order to, to do this double counting where you, we do this Fubini argument, that exchange the average over the primes and the average over the, uh, the words, um, when we, we do this, everything then boils down to, prove, to proving equidistribution of random walks on, fin, on the finite group on G of P. And, and this is where we need uh, approximate groups and we need the expanded graphs and so on. And, and, and the, the theory that was recalled yesterday by, by Anel. Um, so we, we need that random walks equidistribute fast in, in, uh, in uh, finite simple groups of Lie type. And fast means that, it, uh, you know, that it's enough to wait log P times and you're already equidistributed. So, um, and for this, you need to show that uh, all KD graphs, not just, not just almost all, which was known before, that all KD graphs of G of P are expanders. So, so this is the theorem here, which uh, is for SL2 was uh, joint work with uh, Alex Gambrod a number of years ago, and that we are uh, generalizing here with, with Oren. Um, to arbitrary uh, simple groups of Lie type. Okay, uh, I'm running out of time. I just wanted to say that um, the, the to end by re reminding that um, uh, these uh, the, this theory of, uh, of expanders and, and uh, these bounds for groups of Lie type, uh, of course, is based on the bourguin gambord method and and and. Uh, classification of approximate groups, Pibra Sabo and, and myself and Green Tao. But um, just wanted to remind that uh, uh, Udi had a, a key insight there and, and um, without his paper, uh, I don't think we would have uh, come up with, with, with the proof of this theorem. Um, so thank you, Udi, for all your great ideas and, uh, and your generosity. I'll end here. Thank you very much. Uh...